Hi everyone, let's take a look at problem 3-1a, which is a problem that asks us to prepare adjusting and subsequent journal entries. We have the Arnez company, and they follow the practice of recording prepaid expenses and unearned revenue revenues in balance sheet accounts. Their annual accounting period ends at December 31st, 2008. The following information concerns the adjusting entries to, re to be recorded on that date. Okay, and we'll work through these one at, one at a time, but let's just read the first one now. The office supplies account started the year with a $4,000 balance. During 2008, the company purchased supplies for $13,400, which was added to the office supplies account, and the inventory at the end of the year was $2,554. Okay, now here's the requirement. We'll work on these one transaction at a time. Use the information to prepare adjusting entries as of the end of the year. Okay, so back to our first issue. Our first issue says the office supplies started the year at $4,000 and then $13,400 was added to it. And I'm reading from the part A there and the end of the year there was two thousand five hundred and fifty four dollars okay so the math involved is take four thousand dollars add thirteen thousand four hundred to it so we've got seventeen thousand four hundred in the account but we don't know there's only two thousand five hundred and fifty four dollars on hand so the difference between the seventeen four and the two thousand five five four represents supplies that were used that dollar amount is fourteen thousand eight hundred and forty six dollars we need to reduce office supplies debit office supplies expense for that amount okay now let's look at transaction B now to the left of my mouse an analysis of the company's insurance policies uh, determined that they had three policies in effect policy A policy B and policy C Policy A had 24 months of coverage starting on April 1st. Policy B had 36, and Policy C had 12. Okay, now this one takes a little bit of math. Maybe we could work it off to the side here. Okay, now I've copied the pertinent data over to another sheet in Excel so we can come up with the adjustment required. We've got the policies in front of us, when the, when the policy was purchased, the months of coverage that the policy is for, and the total cost. And they tell us in here that um, all of the policies were charged or, or debited to prepaid insurance account for the full cost. Okay, and any prior year-end year adjusting entries were made. So down here I've entered that information with the infor the months we need. So the number of months is here, right? We've got the policy A, B, and C here. This would be the dollar amount. And um, then we have the monthly cost, the number of months, and the expense amount. Um, now, this column right here is important because this we have to figure out how many months apply for year 2008. The first policy goes 24 months starting mid-2007, so it goes through through 2009, so all 12 months need to count. So if we then take the monthly cost and multiply it by the um, 12 months, we get 7,200. Policy B went into effect on April 1st, so only nine months of that monthly cost comes in. And by the way, my monthly costs are simply the result of taking the full amount and dividing it by the number of months. Okay, so once you put the formula in here, you could copy it into here, and it'll just work fine. And then policy C started in August of 2008, so we really only had five months of coverage for the year. Okay, then we can copy this down, right, and we we're able to calculate how much expense relates to 2008. And then finally, um, we just total it, and we come up with the total expense amount required is 11,440. So since it was all charged to prepaid expense, we can make that journal entry for 11,440. Okay, and there you see it right there, a debit to insurance expense and a credit 
to prepaid insurance. Okay, now let's take a look at transaction C, which says the company has 15 employees. They earn a total of 1,960 in salaries each working day. They're paid on each Monday for their work in a five-day work week ending on the previous Friday. And we're to assume that on December 31st, which is a Tuesday, all 15 employees work the first two days of that week. And because New Year's is a paid holiday, they will be paid salaries for five days on Monday, January 6th. Okay, now I've copied note C over into another area where we can just look at this by itself. Okay, so what we know is the salary cost per day is 1960 with December 31st falling on a Tuesday and being paid the next year, we know that two days during that week fell during years 2008, so we need to record expense in the amount of two days to properly match the expenses in the proper year, right? We need to match the expenses to the revenues that go with that year, so two days were worked by the salaried workforce even though they were paid uh, um, in 2009. So 3920 is the entry we need to make. And then if we look right here, we see that we would debit salaries expense for that dollar amount, 3920 and record our obligation to pay these employees on the books at, two th at the end of 2008 in that same dollar amount. And that takes care of Adjustment C. Okay, let's look at Transaction D. The company purchased a building on January 1st of 2008, it cost $960,000, and it's expected to have a $45,000 salvage value at the end of its 30-year uh, life. Um, and so we can calculate the annual de depreciation as $30,500, and I've done that here. We take the cost less the salvage value to come up with the depreciable base, divided by the life of the asset, and what you come up with is $30,500. So then we need to simply record that transaction. Let me slide on down. I'll show you that transaction here. Let's move on up here. We would debit depreciation expense for $30,500 and credit the contra asset account called accumulated depreciation building. That takes care of adjustment D. Okay, let's read transaction E to the left of my mouse. Um, the company's not large enough to occupy the entire building it owns, so it rented space to a tenant at $3,000 per month, and it started this on November 1st. The rent was paid on, on time in November, um, and, it, and they're telling us they credited it to the rent earned account, so they took it directly to the income statement showing the revenue. But the tenant has not paid the December rent. The company's worked out an agreement with the tenant, and the tenant promises to pay both December and January on January 15th. And uh, the tenant has also agreed not to fall behind again. Okay, uh, the, the important thing to recognize here is that we have earned $3,000. We just haven't been paid for it. So proper accounting would tell us we need to record that revenue. So if I slide over here now, I've shown that transaction E where we'll debit rent receivable um, and which is an asset account right a a short-term current asset account and then we need to credit rent earned for three thousand dollars to show that we did lease them the space therefore we're entitled to show that it included in our 2008 revenues okay Next, we look at transaction F, which says on November 1st, the company rented space to another tenant for $2,800. The tenant paid five months rent, and we recorded that with a credit to the unearned rent account, which means we recorded it on the balance sheet as a liability. So once we get over here, what we need to do for adjustment F is recognize the proper number of months um, and reduce our unearned rent, the which is an unearned revenue account, right? So we're going to reduce the liability by debiting unearned rent, reducing it by 5,600 and, and uh, crediting rent earned. And um, the 5,600 is the two months worth of rent, November and December, that we would have earned. 2,800 times two 
gets us that 5,600. Okay, now I want to quickly go over the subsequent transactions that we'd have left to do. Regarding the payroll entry from Part C that we, we went over earlier, uh, we still need to record the cash payment for that first full week of pay, and that would amount to $9,800. Then we would, we would need to decrease the salaries payable that we recorded for $3,920, and we would decrease it by debiting $3,920. And the difference then is the, is the salary's expense for the three days that relate to Jan, uh, 2009 or January of 2009. And as a result, we're, we don't recall the full 9800 in expense in January, but only the portion that relates to it, the 5880. Okay, that takes care of the subsequent entry we would have relating to the salaried workforce. Now, with regard to the rent payment in, in uh, the cash payment relating to rent in transaction E, we would collect the full $6,000 from the tenant that fell behind. We would then reduce rent receivable for $3,000, um, and that re represented December's rent that we already accrued at the end of 2008, and then also show an extra $3,000 rent for the month of January, and therefore rent earned $3,000 shows up in the 2009 year, the subsequent year. And uh, that takes care of this problem, everyone. Thank you.